And that is all the term I'm going to say. <laughs> so this session is coding from metal, developing with the Android SDK. Now, now, how many of you people are here are interested in programming in C and C++ on Android? Woo. All right, all right. That's good. I think most of you are here for the right reason. Um, now, originally, I, I was going to begin this talk when the last, when the last time I was in Munich was uh, 15 years ago. And when I came to Munich 15 years ago, it was impossible to get internet access. <laughs> and uh, things haven't exactly changed all that much in here, <laughs> unless, uh, unless you have a phone. And uh, it, it, it's exciting to think that the phone that I'm carrying around today actually has more bandwidth than all of Italy had when I was here 15 years ago. <laughs> so it, 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 uh, it's amazing. It's amazing to be back. So, why do you come? I mean, uh, you know, well, you want, you might have existing C or C++ or other portable code. You want really high performance. You want to do physics sessions. You want to do mixing and sound. You want to do all sorts of cool stuff that's really hard to do with Dalvik. Um, you want to do OpenGL 2.0 and you want to go all the way back to Claire. We didn't, we didn't actually surface a wrapper for uh, that until uh, Froyo. Or you want to use higher memory requirements because with the NDK you are not limited to the size of the VM. Now, I must mention that this means that your application can pretty much cause everything else on the phone to shut down. So with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> and it, it's very important to recognize that you, know, you can really piss your users off doing it. Um, so why not make code? Well, one is that you actually want your code to look like it's meant for Android. You want it to interface and you want it to you know, look like an Android app and it's really hard to do that if you're writing your entirely native code. Um, finally, you want to have an easier development experience. In truth, it, the tools for NDK are just not ever lost yet as what's in Java. And uh, so obviously, you're going to have a lot easier time. NDK is for, you have, a, you have some code you want to port over, you want high performance, but it's not for you to use for development. So what do you get in K? Oh, I should point out, by the way, these, all of these droid icons, as I call them, were all drawn on the whiteboard of Building 44 by one of the engineers on the team. And I thought they were cool enough that I'd taken them and brought them off and I'd use GIMP and I'd, you know, massage them and I'd put them into this presentation. So you'll see a few more. But that's in there, just from a whiteboard, doodling away, you know, trying to, trying to tweet trash. All right, what do you get? You get the C, you get a little bit of standard C++, math, you get threads, you get logging, you get compression, um, you get open GLES, and in Trillia you actually get something called JNI which is kind of cool. So you can actually uh, you know, get a little closer to writing directly with the frame buffer. Not quite, but a little bit closer. Um, so what's missing? Well, first of all, your whole application lifecycle event structure is missing. Your input, your sensor events, your resource and asset management for internationalization, you got your high level networking. Um, sound and media processing and text input. None of the stuff is in the NDK. If you need your application needs to use a lot of this stuff, and you're going to need to use these a little bit, um, probably not a good choice. So here's the famous you know, Android architecture slide, and this is uh, the Android architecture on NDK. So just to give you a little bit of a graphic presentation, you can't take advantage of other applications, framework, or runtime, or any of this stuff without, without being some calls and installed. So, if your standard application is going to look like this, you've got you know, an Android framework that's running inside of Dolphin and a bunch of activities and some view hierarchies and maybe a class or two that have helper functions, your NDK app really is not all that different. It basically means you're going to have a native library that's sitting on along with your application that does you know, high performance or cool stuff. So, let's talk about the activity of life cycle. Now, just because you're writing the NDK doesn't mean you get to ignore them. In fact, it's even more important that you understand the activity life cycle because the framework is going to help you out. When you hit, when you can pause, you're going to have to really stop your presence. You're really going to have to stop your audio. You're going to have to do all of the things. Uh, otherwise, your application is really going to mess up the system. Because remember, you have the ability to suck up all of the memory on the system in the NDK. So you can really make the user's life bad. You can make them have to remove the battery from their phone to reboot. So don't do that. Uh, you know, and, and again, you're going to have to know. It doesn't matter if you're in the NDK. Now, let's start off with a little bit of a you know, brief introduction to this. Everyone's probably programmed Android 4, but 
when you're on pause, this is your only chance. You know, in any Android app, this is your shot in order to in order to save everything off, in order to get your your application ready. So that's it. Nothing else is guaranteed to be called. And you've got to do that because you're still running in the foreground. So this is your chance to call into your native code to save anything that you need to say and to and to you know make sure that you're not doing anything bad. You, now you can actually take advantage of the other state if you need to do something slower because your application isn't running in the foreground anymore. So if you need to do a lot of heavy cleanup and you know, especially killing off threads and stuff like that, you can actually do it in the other state. The nice thing about that is that uh, the system will do it for you if it, if it needs the resources. It'll actually start killing off your threads. So on pause it's important because it's your one chance to save stuff, but the rest of the states are very useful, especially say on state and some state. And it's pretty easy to actually make a call from on state and some state into the NDK so you can actually save off those important parameters. So let's talk about input. So all this stuff you don't get in NDK. So you're going to want to pass all this stuff through, and you're going to want to. And, and, and you might be saying, well, why don't you just, you know, pa you know, pass the dispatch function? Why you why use on key up and on key down, and on key multiple, and all these things? And the answer is because if you don't do it, it's going to be harder to handle the passing buttons. The system does the rejection for you on the passing buttons, so it's better but rather than just passing the low level on dispatch key event in, actually use these because they actually do a little bit of work for you. Um, on touch events, again, on track all events, all of these things you don't get with NDK. Assets and resources, once again, all of this stuff. Okay? I mean, I'm kind of like a broken record. Now in sound, you've got three different ways of playing sound on Android. You've got media players to play soundtracks. You've got sound tools to play low latency sound effects, and you've got audio tracks so that you can actually play raw TCM audio, which you can mix in media code. But again, you have to make calls to J9 and use all of so, what do we do? One, we create calls in native code for our activity lifecycle. We create calls in Dolby to support event processing sensors, resource loading, and sound. We wrap our user interface calls and messages to allow them to be called from the rendering thread. And, and, you know, again, there are multiple ways of handling that, but the key thing is most of the UI calls cannot be called in anything but the main thread. And typically, when you're doing an NDK app, especially when you're doing OpenGL, you're going to have a thread that's respo responsible for rendering, and another thread that's actually responsible for um, you know, handling the native window. So um, basically, by wrapping the user interface calls and messages, you can just make calls and simulate from your rendering thread. And finally, um, for asset management, asset management, and this is an interesting one, because a lot of people say, well, I want to get to my PNG files, and I don't want to have to call from Java. And the answer is, well, you can train it. Uh, and I had a lot of talk to the head of, you know, the head framework engineer on Android about what was the best way to do this. And she, she came up with a solution. I'll go into it a little bit later. So, take advantage of GL Surface View. Um, and you don't have to, but you might as well, because it does a lot of things for you. It handles a lot of this EGL stuff for you to get your native window set up to start your rendering. Um, use the input method manager to show and hide the soft keyboard. Obviously, very important. Um, a lot of people, when they do native apps, they implement their own soft keyboard, and it's just, it's not cool. People want to be able to do stuff. And also, when you're using that soft keyboard, you're probably going to want to allow landscape. You're probably going to want to allow, want to allow hard keyboards as well. Highlight um, level two, you need to create your own code, and then you can use JNI to work with third party libraries. So, let's talk about building native code. What do you have to do? So, first of all, in your project, you're going to create a JNI directory. It's going to be the root directory for your native code, and it's also the location for the main file used by the UK build. And uh, so you're going to have android.main. And android.main is going to have source files, which you can use wildcards for, you know, it's native format. And you're also going to have uh, the library you can build. Now, in this case, we have Plasma. Plasma means that people are building two Plasma, Plasma not so library. You also have application.main. Application.main is used typically to say, among other things, what version of the of the CPU you're building for. So in this case, we're building for on five and on seven. And and you, if you actually, this is actually kind of cool because if you build just for ARM five, you don't get to take advantage of hardware floating point. While if you build for ARM seven, you do. If you only build for ARM seven, then actually Android Market's going to be smart and it's going to hide your application from ARM five comps. So uh, it's one one way of, of, of eliminating a lot of lower performance devices is just to do that. 